Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Ian is out, but Brandon Jones is in. <laughs> yeah, definitely in. And what? Taking over every podcast at Easy Allies with Batman. Cup of Jones, done. Yes. Huber Syndrome, I think we did it twice, oh, at yeah. least twice. Yeah. It's time to do it again. Yep. <laughs> so we're here to talk about Batman. I'm more excited to see what, what uh, patrons have to say. Me like, too. Me I'm, too. I want to see where this conversation is going to go. Yes. Uh, it's It's... Being a film uh, podcast, we're mostly going to be talking about mostly going to be talking about uh, film and the animated shows and television. I'm sure comics and games will kind of wedge their way in there, but uh, for the most part, we are going to be talking about Batman in film uh, between the original series, the animated series, Batman Beyond, Batman '89, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises. Batman v Superman, Justice League, Gotham. Thank you for putting that in there, Ian. Ian yeah. did the prompt, so he's here in spirit. <laughs> uh, the upcoming Joker film, Lego Batman, and whatever the future hold holds, Batman has been on screens, big and small, for like 76 years. I'm behind because I haven't seen the second Lego movie yet. I haven't, I haven't seen either of them, Jones. Um, well, did you see the Batman Lego movie? No. No! no. Okay. So nope. I got an edge on you. Yes. It's not a, it's not a very good edge. <laughs> it's not a cherished edge in, in Batman lore, but... First question here. Starting off hot. What is your favorite Batman film ever? Number one Batman film, Jones. What do you got? It's so tough. Because you have a favorite. Yeah. Because that's a, like my, my qualifier always for favorite is when you can get really selfish. Then then it's not then you're then you're not saying well this is the best. Yeah. Yes, yeah, my favorite. It's, pro totally. it's probably Mask of the Phantasm. No, that's a lie. It's probably Return of the Joker. Really? It's probably my favorite Batman movie ever. Yeah. I didn't expect yeah. this. Yeah. Dive in, Jones. Why? Uh, Return of the Joker is fascinating because it's like if you really follow Bruce Tim and Paul Dini and, and their decisions that they you know made in the animated series. Uh, when I was in college, I got the animated series Bible. Uh, so this is like what they handed out to all the writers and like how tall is everyone in relation to, to other people. Like one of my big fascinating takeaways is they're like, no one gets to write an episode about his parents dying. We're done. We're done. <laughs> and then they said that in black and white. It was really interesting like to read that. But uh, to to see like a lot of decisions that they made to try to make that show as adult themed as possible, but realizing it's on three in the afternoon yeah. you know, on Fox. And so yeah. they're like, there's only so much we can do. And really noting those moments where I was like, wow, they j I don't I didn't see that guy get out of that helicopter. I did I think that was a, a reference to like blood in that shot. Yeah. And like just little tiny things that they did. And then they get to do this movie. You know, they get this chance to go back and kind of be like, okay, and, and intentionally start uh, the way that uh, 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 Korra did in, with the Avatar universe, where they start Batman Beyond and intentionally are like, oh yeah, Joker, anyway, moving on. You're like, what happened? Who is, is anyone still alive? And like Freeze comes back in one episode and I think like Clayface was mentioned, like, and there were the sons, uh, the, the Jokers mm -hmm. with a Z, like, they're, they, you know, they alluded to that this happened and obviously to Conroy's in it, but like had no idea what was gonna happen with Joker. And I got to the point where I'm like, I don't think we're ever gonna know. And that's fine. Like, yeah. I really want Batman Beyond to be its own thing. I want Terry McGinnis to be his own character. If this needs to be its own world, that's fine. And then this movie comes out of nowhere yeah. and not only do is are they gonna you know is Hamill coming back and are the uh, uh, supposedly it's somehow gonna tie into the past and then there were rumors of like oh there's like a rated R version or like there and I was like I, oh my my excitement level for this movie is just out of control yeah. and I saw the abridged version I didn't see the director's cut until later and that that movie I think more than anything strictly from a nostalgia fan perspective hit me in the feels so hard yeah I doubled over crying like I I was. I was shaken to the core. Like when, when uh, I can't remember who does her voice. It's not the same actress who does the voice on, on the Batman Beyond the television show, but who plays Commissioner Gordon, Barbara Gordon grown mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. when she's like, all right, Terry, I'll tell you what happened. And like Robin comes in and flips and stands in the, yeah. edge of the building. Like I started weeping. I was just like, <laughs> I didn't realize how much I love this, how much I love these characters and how, you could, I could tell Paul and Bruce were like, oh, we get to do another? All right, gloves are off. Yeah. We're, we're going to do in. the Batman story we always wanted to do. And I read an interview with Paul Dini, and he talked about The Dark Knight Returns, and he talked about like other examples of the Joker dying, or, or this like you know ultimate final fight between Batman and Joker. Kingdom Come, when he's and like he, way yeah, older. Yes, and, so and, he's like, and he's like, yeah, he's like, a lot of times it's done very theatrically, and it's this big, you know, I've got the bomb, Batman. And, you know, it's just this huge, big crescendo. He's like... I think, and I totally agree with him, so I love him so much. He's like, I think it would be quiet and dirty and ugly 
and only the two of them would know what happened and they would never talk about it again. And I'm like, yes, of course. He's like, he's like, it would be, it would be bad. He's like, because they're dancing around it this whole time, you know, and when you finally have to, you know, when you can confront a friend or a loved one, you know, even an enemy with like an unfortunate truth that like this has to end, like yeah. either you're going to die or I'm going to die. Yeah. Ugh. The line where I, yeah, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it, but the line of like, you know, if, if, if it wasn't, I would laugh if it wasn't so pathetic. Oh, what the heck? I'll laugh anyway. I was like, <laughs> that's some of the best Joker writing ever. Perfection. Perfection. Yeah. As far as really emotionally to my core being like, not only is this entertaining, but like, this is what I wanted. Because I think everything else I've experienced with Batman has been like, Okay, you know, like it's not necessarily where I would want this story to go Movies or, or and stuff? what. Everything? Yeah, I mean it's Nolan specifically. Like as I, I've I've learned to accept the, the Nolan yeah. verse for yeah, its yeah, strengths. Yeah. yeah, but it's so far outside of any decision I would expect Batman to make or any way that world exists. Yeah, and it really wasn't until the last movie that I kind of stood back and I was like, oh, okay, I see what you're up to. Like yeah. I just I had the wrong expectations for this. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, yeah. That's nice, my Jones. And I honestly didn't even think about that until I sat down. I knew that question was coming. I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Because, I mean, the 89, so I don't even know it's if I so like Batman hard. or Batman Returns better. Because totally. Batman Returns is so I special. Know, like, dude. it's such a beautiful Catwoman. film. The soundtrack is so good. Dude, Catwoman and Batman Returns is like my favorite character yeah. ever. Catwoman's themes, so all the, the, those really shrill violins, <laughs> man, from uh, Elfman. Like, so epic. So good. Um, yeah, it's tough for me, too. You know, I think of Mask of the Phantasm. I think of Return of the Joker. I think of Dark Knight. Shout out to Sub-Zero. Uh, that yes. was overshadowed by Mask of the Phantasm, but it's, sure. it's its own awesome film. And Heart of Ice, too. I think it kind of, like, sure. takes over that a little bit. Um, you know, I, I, I just always go back to Batman Begins. It's really good. I, I, I really think it's my favorite. I love the Nolan universe because it is so grounded in reality. It's like, what if Batman actually mm -hmm. existed in yes. the real world? And and that is my favorite thing. Um, you know, it's not over the top. Like, you, they meme his voice, of course. We, earlier <laughs> we were talking about, you know, hockey pads and yeah. everything. Uh, but it's just so grounded. And I love that for Batman. You know, it's like, what if this person actually it's like the, dressed yeah. up in a bat costume? It's like what the Matrix. Happen? It's like Rocky. Like, yeah. it's got, I think that's what's missing from so many other Batman movies. It might mm -hmm. it might do that better than any Batman movie ever. Mm -hmm. Just that that journey. You yeah. know, that, like, where you start that movie. Like, I was, as many, like, I had issues with that movie, even when I saw it first in the theaters. But when he's like, he's like, your practice. In the beginning or something to the guy, like, when <laughs> yeah. they get in the fight. I remember seeing that with Amanda and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I love, I'm like, I love, that's right. He's practiced because he's training to be Batman. Like I was such a nerd in the, going dude, to see that movie. When he, I love how like how much he botches it when he like first goes to Gordon and he has like the stapler. He's like, oh yeah, dude, you're one you of the good ones. And oh, then like, yeah. you know, we're so used to Batman just like disappearing, and Gordon's like, what? And Gordon like chases after him, and he like does the the like grab on the rail. He's like, ah. Uh, Scarecrow lights him on fire. Yeah, he's like, ah, he goes like running. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's yeah, it's really fun, and and, and uh, clear homages because I was a huge as as much as again Nolan was you know that trilogy separated from a lot of storytelling I was used to very uh, almost like a direct homage to Year One. Yeah, if you read Batman Year One, totally, there's moments totally. directly from that comic, and yeah. so I was like. Okay, no one. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll give you that. For sure. Yeah, which is the whole the whole sequence with the bats. Like yeah. him, you know, it's even it's even in his boot. Like, yeah. like yeah. when he calls the bats in. What about when he lets Rachel Ghoul go? I don't have to save you. Oh yeah. What well, were your thoughts on that? Because that's kind of well, like yeah. uh, you know, I draw to uh, Snyder's Man of Steel, and I think the greatest thing in that movie was the end. With what he, with the, the choice Superman makes at the end of that movie, that kind of, oh, yeah. it's just no, like, I'm whoa, not, I didn't yeah. expect this. Uh, I think kind of similar to Batman is like letting yeah. someone go like that. I'm not one of those fans that's <laughs> like Batman doesn't use guns, <laughs> Superman doesn't kill. Like it's a nice rule, you know, to maybe stick to. I think it's a fun challenge narratively to be like, let's try not to do it. But like, it doesn't mean like you can't, you know. Like yeah. I think if. Someone was going to be harmed, and Batman's all his gadgets broke, and there was a gun in front of him. Batman would be like, Pfft. you know, like he's like, I want to get the job done more than anything. I'm not gonna like my parents. Like it's not, you know, like I can, I'm Batman. I can overcome that, you know, like. But I do have principles. I, I did start somewhere. Yeah. I think that's a le kind of a leftover from the you know 50s, 60s aesthetic of just kind of like 
you know, you would, yeah. you know, you, you'd get the, the, the listing of like, here's everything about this, you know, superhero. I remember when Superman denounced America, not really denounced, but when he was like, he was like, oh, you know, truth, justice in the American way. He's like, mm, just truth and justice is fine. <laughs> He's like, I don't need to be beholden to one country. That doesn't make sense. He's like, yeah. I'm, I'm beholden to Earth. To Earth. This, sure. this planet took care of me, not necessarily America. And you're like, whoa, that's epic. Also, comics are around forever. It's like, yeah, have Superman kill somebody. Let's try it on. Yeah. Let's see how it feels. You know, like, that's a very dramatic moment. One of the better moments, sadly, of Man of Steel. But that's, a, yeah. that's another that's reaction a whole, shot. Whole other. <laughs> uh, Sarah says, what is your favorite Batman film ever? My favorite is most likely a lot of others' favorite, The Dark Knight. I feel that it has all the things that a Batman fan would love, the iconic lines, Harvey's descent into Two-Face, and of course, the showdown between Batman and the Joker. Heath Ledger's portrayal of the clown prince of crime is still amazing and frightening to this very day. That movie gets better every time I watch it. Right? When I first saw it, I was like, well, I have issues. The (laughs) only, uh, Jones, I remember the second time I was like, this movie's pretty good. Third time I'm like, this movie's amazing. Yeah. (laughs) I, uh, cause, cause you and I, I'm sure we'll get into it later, but you and I love Two Face the most. Oh yeah, he's yeah, and the I most important villain in the yeah the gallery, no question. And I remember the only disappointment I had was that it starts and ends in that movie, Two Face's journey. Well, that's I my that's more. my issue with Nolan. Yeah, is Batman in the Nolan verse exists for like. In total, like three weeks, <laughs> you know, like, but again, like I was disappointed, but then I looked back and I was like, oh, again, it's, it's, it's what thing. if, you yeah. know, what about this Batman? You know, like you think about the, the hundreds of times in the Justice League and obviously in all the comics where like they would time travel and go to all these different universes and experience different Justice Leagues and different Batman. And, and that would be interesting. Like what if he became Batman to solve a specific problem mm-hmm. like three times and there's yeah. like, I'm out. Yeah. And which is another I mean, a, 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 another uh, um, thing that I think leads to his realistic approach. Like, what if somebody yeah. actually did this? Yeah. Could they do it for 20 years? That's what I love about like, Dark Knight Rises. Could that they people, really... People give it give it flack for him, like, being in a cane and everything and all, like... Yeah. Uh, I love that. Because yeah. it's like, dude, if you were, ba- if you were doing what he's doing, yeah. your body would... D- when he when he wakes up with the bruises all over his back and falls yeah. forward in the push-ups is honestly one of my favorite moments of the entire trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> like th- like that moment, Michael Keaton didn't do that. George Clooney didn't do that. Val Kilmer didn't do that. Like that like no one had got to that point where you're like, oh, like they trained for this, you yeah. know, like. Um, so epic. And I think that's like I think that kind of changed also in in comic book movies in general now. Like you see Brie Larson, all of the the press of her like pushing trucks, and like it's yeah. like every time somebody gets cast, it's like all right, see you at the gym on Monday, yeah. like <laughs> yeah, because that yeah, can't fake that stuff. Uh, Greg, the Dark Knight Kettering, what is your favorite Batman film ever? I would hope would weigh yeah. in on this episode. <laughs> oh, he weighs in. <laughs> uh, Mask of the Phantasm is the perfect Batman film. It covers all the classic story beats. Batman versus cops. Batman struggling with his vow to his parents. Batman versus Joker. And Batman doing detective work to uncover a new mysterious villain. Having that villain, having a personal connection and grounded motivations creates a perfect package. And super efficient. It's only 90 minutes. I'm happy to say I was able to watch this one in theaters. Shirley Walker did the music for that, who also did the music for the animated series. You think about Elfman, because Elfman wrote the theme theme, to the animated series, but then she wrote everything else. So, like... um, Shirley Walker. And the the Phantasm score is is really, really great. Uh, The... When he... Finds the mob. Sorry, it's just Batman spoilers, just yeah, nonstop yeah. in this episode. Sorry, oh, yeah. uh, but when he finds the guy, the mob boss, I can't remember because the Phantasm's hitting all these guys off, yeah. and he finds one guy in his chair, and the Joker's got the camera, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> like I thought I was gonna kill a Phantasm, but it's Batman." Yeah. And he's like, "Even better." <laughs> and like, there's this just really like horror sound, like ah, when he finds the guy in the chair, yeah. and Joker's like, he's like, "Oh, he's like, well, soon, you know, your face is gonna be on uh on on, on the you know." Everyone's gonna see your face to say nothing of your neck and spleen. He like jumps out the window. Like such a creepy moment. Even when I see it, like for you know, for the fourth or fifth time. Yeah. Just like his, yeah. Especially in the movies, like they really let Joker be terrifying. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I think love, yeah. I love when Joker has the hat and he's looking like really sinister. You know, <laughs> just like the, the walk. I love when he just like goes well, the shadows. dark. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you you just see like little corners of his cheek and the smile and the mm-hmm. eyes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Messed up. Uh, Cathal Valance says, a toss-up between The Dark Knight for the packed day one screening we went to that had people stand up and applaud at the end, and Batman and Robin. 
because I was so young and watched it over and sure. over and over on tape. Yeah, let's talk about the Schumacher films for a second, Jones. What are your thoughts? I I love them. I love them. <laughs> I love them because I love Batman. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. their own. Like yeah, they're problematic, but like they are exactly what Joel Schumacher wanted them to be. <laughs> and it was fun. Like Schumacher is interesting because I remember, like. You know, I was like, oh, okay, it's like bummer that Burton's not going to make more, mm -hmm. but like he's, he produ he's producing Batman Forever, and like Schumacher's coming in. What else does Schumacher do? And it's like Lost Boys, like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and like some other things, like, right, right, okay. Oh, yeah. And then like you see Batman Forever, and like, whoa, it's not where I thought it was going. <laughs> and then like I go back and like watch Lost Boys again, yeah. and there's like the shot of like the greased up muscle guy with the saxophone, like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, the writing was on the wall. I mean, I, like, I, maybe I didn't see, you know. <laughs> I didn't pay close enough attention to Schumacher films in yeah. the past, um, but it's its own it's its own thing, you know. Yeah. And it, it tried to, especially Batman and Robin, just dives completely into the deep end. And the funny thing about Batman and Robin is, uh, so you start with Nicholson in a very bizarre over a woman, you know, a, yeah. very, a very strange origin story to Joker it had not been done before. Uh, he yeah, he was kind of gangsterish, mm -hmm. but like um, it was really like their own, like you know, Burton just. Like dreamt up his own crazy thing. Who wrote eighty nine Batman? Actually, I don't know that. Great question. Um, uh, and then you bring Catwoman into it, who's you know uh, uh, mouth to mouth by various cats to come. In. Whoa, you know. And then like Penguin, who's like you specifically see him being like shunned away by his parents, and then he's like trying to reclaim his birthright, and like just a lot of weird stories that they hadn't necessarily done before. Like uh, I don't know if Nigma ever worked for Wayne Enterprises directly. Mm -hmm. I don't think he did. Like I think like, and that's a problem with these movies is like the comics are great because they establish all these other companies and crime families, and like yeah. the city's just so rich. Whereas like in the movie. He's just like, Ugh, we only have eight characters. Wayne. It's, it's got to tie back to Wayne <laughs> yeah. at some point. Uh, and he, how much they just completely threw away Two Face's characterization. You literally see Harvey Dent once in Batman Forever. Yeah. Once. You, twice. In the flashback when he's like, ah, in the courtroom. And you see like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy Lee Jones getting sprayed. And then at the very end, he's like, uh, he, uh, when he shows up and all the girls are there and they're like, and me. And he turns forward and he goes, and me. And it's the only time he's Harvey. Yeah, it's Harvey, yeah. And then he's like, ah, and me. He's, yeah. he's Two-Faced the whole movie. And I'm just yeah. like, uh. uh. And then Batman and Robin comes along, which is just complete circus nonsense, yeah. but actually nails the origin story for both uh, Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it was out of those four films. It took from it. It, yeah. was the, it was the weirdest, and a lot of many would say dumbest, but like got you know, really went back to the drawing board to like tell those stories correctly. Yeah. It was it was funny seeing like Schwarzenegger like ah, falling into the pit. But at the same time, I was like, I'll take what I can get. Yeah. You know, this is, you know, Mr. Freeze on the big screen. Cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Finally. And oh. Bane. Oh, Bane. Bane. It's like dude, five no. foot eight Bane. Like, yeah. I don't want to talk about that poor guy. That Bane. Uh, Lisa la Silverstein. Last one before we move on. Logan says, I'll probably be the only one person who says Batman Begins. Beach to I, it. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I think Dark Knight is probably a superior film, but Begins is my favorite. Yeah, Begins is really great. More objectively, I think Dark Knight is definitely better, but Begins is still my favorite. Yep. Part of that is because of Liam Neeson, but I'm also just a sucker for origin stories, even if that's the one origin story that's been done to death. Scarecrow is also one of my favorite villains, so having him in there was great. And Neeson aside, Rachel it was a great villain to set up Bruce to become Batman. What's uh, the Scarecrow actor's name? Cillian Murphy. Yeah, not a fan of that portrayal at all. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'll just leave it there. I don't want to be too critical yeah. and harp on it. Yeah. But he's just, he's just he's a charming, good-looking guy, and that's not Scarecrow for me at yeah. all. Like a lot of those villains are not, yeah. unless explicit. Someone like Harvey so Dent, Jones, who is, is a good-looking guy intentionally because he was, you know, yeah. top of his class at school. He's like a lawyer. He's like a very slick Rick. Yeah. Whereas like having like sexy Scarecrow, yeah. I was like, what? Jones, like, I want to dive into this because this is this is where me and you. I think our only fundamental disagreement with sure. Batman begins, no pun intended. Uh, and I'm always on the side, and, and you too, uh, but I'm always on the side of like, do whatever you want to do mm -hmm. with Batman. But you have like a, uh, uh, I feel like sometimes you're like, yo, if it's not this way, I'm not really into it. Case in point, like like Scarecrow right here, like you didn't like that portrayal. Mm -hmm. Is that elaborate? I mean, well, okay. First of all, uh, yeah. it stems from instant reactions of me as a kid, yeah. where like how I've expanded my thinking over the years. Originally, yeah. it was if it's not this, it's it's wrong. Get out of my face with this crap. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. we're like, uh, 
and and that evolved over over time. But then I, I realized, okay, <clears throat> when I get those emotions, how I can process them is start to think, okay, well, if it's not kind of what I intended or not what I think is the best way to do it, what do we gain from the way it's done here? Mm -hmm. And like case in point, ba uh, Dark Knight, the decision that uh, Harvey Dent and Bruce Wayne don't know each other mm -hmm. and they're just meeting each other for the first time. Yeah. To me, when you have them know each other and you have them have this rich history, like there's so much to explore. And when they don't know each other, it creates some interesting new scenes. I love the scene at, uh, does he, is he having dinner with him? Where, yeah, like, they're at the party. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So I like these kind of, you know, I, I, I love when Bale plays Bruce Wayne. I love yes, it. Like yes. the, they, they did that a lot better, uh, uh, a lot better than a lot of previous people had. But again, it's like once you get past those, inter those introductions with Harvey and Bruce, then you're just like, not much more to explore here in their relationship. And that's a bummer, you know? So like, that's how I weigh it. Not like right versus wrong. Great, great um, point. Great and point. before I even get there, there's the part of me that's like, if you made a Batman movie where he just like babysits like an iguana for two hours, like I'm gonna watch it, you know? Like any anytime I saw like eight minute Batman fan film, I'm like, click, like yeah. I'm, I'm here for this. Yeah. I might not agree with it or I might question like, oh, weird decision, why mm -hmm. did you do that? But like- That's a very interesting point. Batman versus Predator, what this do you, doesn't have to make sense, I want it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's good. What do you gain from doing it this way? I, I and get that. I get more that. than anything else, um, you know, I love the Avengers, I love the X-Men, I love, um, uh, you know, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, but like, Something about Batman where like I really formulated like what would make sense in this world? How would how would he make these decisions for myself? Yeah. So that whenever something is like the, the, the polar opposite of yeah. what I think it should Gotham. be, it's like, <laughs> uh, I mean, I can't really say that for Gotham because I haven't watched it. So like they might have done some things on Gotham that I would really agree with. One of the or risks that like. I'm like, yeah, it's yeah. time to take that risk or, or change up that character. Oh, they've taken risks. <laughs> when you have like, uh, like for example, in Dark Knight uh, Returns, when you, or no, Dark Knight, what is that? Rises. rises. I was gonna say yeah. Strikes Back. Uh, Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight does a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, Dark Knight Rises, when you have Talia like, and Bruce have no relationship, yeah. then it's like, interesting choice. You know, it's yeah. it's those things that like, take a richness from the comics and turn it into like, a nothingness in the film. It's like, it's weird, you know, Good at point. least do a reference to it. Came, you don't have to get into brain, it, but, Thank so that's you. it. I appreciate but it's that. weird. I get really touchy when yeah. it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. Especially I have a couple <laughs> friends that like, we get together and just like, I didn't like that, I didn't like it either, you know? And like, who are we to say? Like, what's the, Love it. what to do with Batman? The I mean, Batman rules are made to be broken. Yes. So, and oh, and Gotham breaks them. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. You would have loved, though, they had one of these episodes, because uh, we're in the final season now, home stretch, there's like four left, they're going all in. And the episode with Joker just touched on everything in one episode. They did animated series, they did Nicholson, they did Heath Ledger. It was like a tribute to so many interpretations of Gotham. Joker and Batman in one episode, it was overwhelming. I was just like, yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a gimme. What is your favorite Batman show? Oh, yeah. I animated. wonder. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Animated series, obviously. There's many variants of it, though. Like, it was a bummer when they changed the animation styles. Like, you, re you, got it. you really got to go back yeah. to some of those originals where they just spent way more money than you should spend yeah. on an animated show. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, really, really... Yeah, good, good special stuff. Uh, Jones, I want to get into your origins of the animated series. When did it all start? What happened? What I mean, because that that made me a Batman fan. Oh yeah, you know. Oh, uh, I was primed because I was I was ten years old in eighty yeah. nine. So I was ten when that Batman movie came I was out. Two, and so I, I liked didn't see it. I liked the concept of Batman. Like Batman was a cool. He was a cool cat, you know, like mm -hmm. I liked Adam West, you know, like I dug the comments, I liked his outfit. I like went as Batman for Halloween one time. So like yeah. I just gravitated more towards, I was a Boy Scout. So like I liked <laughs> Superman and Batman and DC Comics and Green Lantern and The Flash. And Marvel was a little little edgy for me. <laughs> and um, I didn't really get into Marvel until high school. And so like I had met friends that were just like, would give me like stacks of X-Men. Yeah. Just get into that. Um, and... So yeah, it was it was really the 89 Batman that made me realize like, oh, this this actually has this is something I can enjoy now that I'm older. Like I'm at the age where like I'm kind of growing up and starting to watch an R-rated movie every now and then and you know, like starting to 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 see other like more intense, you know, uh um things with art and, and starting to read comic books more and like, whoa, there's some actually some really gritty, creepy stuff yeah. going on, especially late eighties and into the nineties. And um but it, yeah, I've, I've I've rarely had something like the animated series that just came along and they were like, 
this is now your epicenter of this thing. Yeah. Everything else is now just going to kind of dance around this nucleus, yeah. <laughs> you know, this like this the, the the heart of the star of of the the absolute way, the best way to do it. And yeah. and it's tough because like with a lot of different interpretations of Batman, case in point, the, the Nolan verse, it's like love this, hate this, mm-hmm. this went well, this didn't, you know, it's like I I have to talk about every character and every scene individually because there's a lot I like and a lot I don't like. And the animated series is the one thing with Batman that like really hard to find. <laughs> like flawless. The one Yeah, like the, to me it's honestly flawless. The major criticism I could levy against Batman, which is totally unfair because of how advanced it was animation wise, is the physicality of the action, especially in the early episodes, Slow. is a little wonky. Ugh. Whenever he th- whenever he throws somebody, they kind of Ugh. float, you know? Like, sure. It was just weird. Like whenever Joker and Hammer like slipping and grabbing things, yeah. it's like, what? Totally, like totally. their body proportions yeah. change in weird ways. Yeah. Um like that's it. That's yeah. all I can think. There's some writing in that series that uh, was just yeah better than next level. Better than uh, it had any that, right to be. That leads us right into what is your favorite episode from the animated series? I mean, yeah, Heart of Ice is just so Heart excellent. Of Ice. Perfection. Um, but I want to give one shout out to an episode. I don't even remember the name. Um, and they've done this a couple times. Uh, there was the one where uh, Mad Hatter. Uh, becomes Batman and traps him per in, chance in to his, dream. Right. I think it's called. And he, and he like gets to the tower and stops yes. Batman and then wakes himself up Dude. at the end. And oh. I just love it's it's not that one, but that one's really good. But I love Matt Hatter because Matt Hatter doesn't know what happened. Like Matt Hatter talks to him inside the dream, but when he wakes up, Matt Hatter's just been looking at like his yeah. life signs. He's like, I don't know why. How, why'd you wake up? Yeah. And I just love that thing where he's like, I gave you everything you wanted. Yeah. You know, like he gave you your world back. Um, I love that. Batman but, goes to, or Bruce Wayne goes to read the book. The numbers are all, yeah. or the letters are all scrambled. He's like married to Selina Kyle. Yeah. Like Gotham's, it's everything's during the day. So like yeah. Gotham looks really pretty. And um, but there was one, um, uh, one episode that was similar to that where he was like caught in a dream world. Uh, and I don't know if it was a Scarecrow episode or, or something else, but uh, he has a nightmare where he's chasing his parents and they walk into a tunnel and the tunnel becomes a revolver and the revolver yeah. comes up and f- flames like and yes. he's like stuck on a pedestal like oh no and the revolver yeah. pointed at him three in the afternoon on yeah. Fox yeah. a revolver yeah. points at him like cocks the gun and boom and fires and he yeah. wakes up and there's fire and quote unquote lava yeah. but as the the gun comes up over the fire you don't see the fire anymore so you just see this gun with red just drizzling out of the gun so it's blood basically yeah. like they establish it as lava but they can get it past the sensors because yeah. you know but it was, it was those scary. moments I remember stylistically I was like I cannot believe I just watched that that was insane yeah. like what a great way to you know again it, it it you can air it on television it's fine but if you like really understand artistically kind of what they're going for. It's like as effective as a live action or as yeah. you know, something that has no rating attached to it whatsoever could be. Yeah. And I was like, that. I've, ne- I've never seen an animated show do that. This is like, this was like an hour after Tiny Toons, you know? This is like, what the hell? I, I got like the, into the, cl- it. the old classic X-Men series. It's yeah. great, I love it, but it, it never got there. You know, yeah. it, it, it was so rushed. It never like really took the time. Totally. And that's the crazy thing about character. the animated series is 20 minutes. You know, like yeah. you're done with the episode and you're just like, that that flew by but didn't at the same yeah. time. Like that was so, so quick. Full. But they just knew like we can only have time to focus on a couple characters. Even the one where like the brother, uh, you asked my favorite episode and you, oh, you know, we'll you, you unleashed Pandora's box. Yeah. The one where um, uh, there's the, the oh, there's a great soundtrack to it too. But uh, the the brother who's like a priest and his had his kid, uh, his friend when he was younger, who grew up to be a gangster. Yeah, and they oh, like he, he got his toe stuck on the tarp on the tracks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was like, what a cool! That's not really about anybody. Like yeah. that doesn't you know call from any specific comic book or something. It's just a really yeah. great idea that somebody had, yeah. and that's what I like. Again, when you have these movies and you have these huge villains, you don't get the time at all to like really focus on the gangsters. And like yeah. that's something I think that Batman Begins brought back into it, where it was just like <laughs> that's my favorite stuff. It starts with the gangsters, yeah. and and again my. My own personal Batman, that's how I imagine it as well. That, like, when he becomes Batman at like 22, mm-hmm. uh, 20, 21, 22, he goes immediately after organized crime. So, like, when the golden era, when he's like 35 yeah. and like Robin's in it and like all the villains are out, like there's Eggman and, and you know, Maxius Zeus and all the weird ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Organi- like the the crime families, there's only really like two left. He he like demolished that stuff, and he thought he was in charge. Batman's like, oh, phew, did it, and then Joker shows up and t- he loses Harvey, and like, oh, it just kind of all like slips through his fingers. But uh, 
Yeah. And the and the later ones, too, because they deal with, and I've said this multiple times in Easy Ally stuff, but uh, the animated series really dealt with um, psychology a lot. You know, yes. they really, it wasn't just that, like, oh, Harvey's goofy. It was like, this is a horrible relationship that she has with Joker, this abusive relationship that she mm-hmm. keeps returning to. Mm-hmm. Three in the afternoon on Fox. Yeah. They're like, we're dealing with these issues yes. where Poison Ivy's like, snap out of it, you know? We're like, there's one uh, episode where the, the penguin quote unquote tries to reform. Is he really reforming? Is he not? The ventriloquist has an amazing arc in the later seasons Mm -hmm. where he like really tries to get away from the life and it gets pulled back in. Uh, There's one where Harley like legitimately tries to go clean and just can't because she she has problems. She's like, I can't, you know, she gets in this like uh, skirmish in a store just trying to buy a dress, you know? And it's like, it was cool to see those struggles and be like, okay, you know, we've already done five or six episodes with this character. What do we do now? And it's like, well, what if they tried to live a normal life? And like, it's cool the show got to stick around for that long yeah. to start exploring that stuff. Totally. Uh, yeah. Hard Vice, Two-Face, Part 1 and 2. Those are always the episodes, like, if I were to show someone who doesn't necessarily like animation or isn't the biggest Batman fan, I would show them Hard Vice and Two-Face, Part 1 and 2. Because I think those are just so universal. Like, you were talking about the psychology, right? Like, you know, Harvey turning into Two-Face. There's those scenes with uh, Dr... Isley, right? Mm. Dr. Isley? Well, that's Pamela. No, it's... uh, Oh, my gosh. Tompkins. Oh, yeah, Leslie. Leslie Tompkins, yeah. right? Just, yeah, those psychiatrist scenes, and then, of course, like, Mr. Freeze just trying to save his wife, you know? And, like, big business coming in, like, oh, we don't want your stuff anymore. <laughs> like, no, don't shut it down. Like... Just so well, and, epic. and and to draw connections between like great Batman moments, that moment uh, where he leaves um, Liam Neeson on the train, yeah, you know, of him just like, oh, don't get me wrong, I I despise you, yeah, and I'm not gonna reach my hand out and help you at all. Mm-hmm. And when like the guy's frozen, imagine that, imagine being frozen mm-hmm. in ice, imagine the ice like surrounding half of your body, and he's just like, yeah. and everyone at the party's like, whoa, man, yeah, and he's just like, oh, thank you, Batman, and Batman's like. Look, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. at the end, like mm-hmm. that. I think, like all of Mister Freeze's stuff is so good, but like that's like such a powerful moment yeah. where Batman's like, "You're if you know, you're going to prison." Yeah, you're the yeah. one I was really going after, yeah. not him. I'm trying you know? to save Victor, yeah. and so that's why I, that's why I like that. You know, you you have just that's why I love that Rogues Gallery so much because they all have their different pockets where like you have. Like, you don't necessarily sympathize for someone like Riddler, yeah. but you kind of do for the Mad Hatter. It's oh, like, dude. maybe we could save the Mad Hatter. Like, there maybe could have been a point where we could have saved him, whereas Joker's, like, super far gone. Where yeah. it's like, Two-Face, like, no. You know, like, yeah. you have these different relationships with people. Riddler, uh, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? The yeah. origin with, like, the maze. The Minotaur. Up, that was like, one of my favorite ones. And that's in the Super Nintendo oh, game. Oh, it's so good. Is the, the Minotaur maze. Yeah. And then uh, Feet of Clay, of course, is, like, right up there. Oh, the yeah. Clayface origin one and two part because again when you when you give that tragedy to the villains you know he's like trying to be an actor yeah he's the the cream is basically a drug he's like a drug addict now just 3 p.m three in the afternoon deal with drug addicts and and again just animation just that you can you really really if you ever have get a chance to watch any of those episodes of clayface is in before they redid the animation just stare at him like just all the you know and all the work they had to do i love like we were talking about uh, the new adventures when they change the animation style. There's the time jump and, and even Batman Beyond when, there, when there's the time jump. I love when these villains transition into time jumps like that. So you have the Clayface one where uh, his spawn, his creation, the girl, like goes and, and has the relationship with Tim Drake and it ends up just being a part of Clayface. She melts. It's so brutal. <laughs> yeah. It's so brutal. And then my favorite Batman Beyond is when Freeze comes back. Oh, yeah. And it's the two-parter. And he's, like, out in the daytime. He's yeah. got the technology. <laughs> oh, the Uneasy Alliance, dude. So good. A uh, couple couple favorite episodes. Uh, Dark Knight, obviously. There's a ton of great ones that I'll mention. Almost got him. One of my all-time Oh, days. yeah. That one's just so fun. Yeah. Uh, Two-Face. Croc. I hit him with a rock. <laughs> yeah. I'll stare at him. like Robin's Reckoning. Hard of Ice. But I'll try to... Because think. that... Because, all, who, you know, uh, Almost Got Him is people having fun making a television show. Yes. You know, like, that is yes. them. That is one... That is, like, the day one of Writer's Room of season four. And they all come in, like, what do you yeah. got? And one person's like, I have, I have a really fun idea <laughs> yeah. for a show. Batman in my basement. Like, another one of those, like, day in the life. Yeah. You know. Uh, he's going to try to pick a lesser known one. Dude, I think this is the one you mentioned, actually. Never Too Late. 
This to me is amazing. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. If it even got made for a kid's show, it's got no rogue gallery villain and involves a mob boss turf war between Thorn and an aging Stromwell. Not only that, but it shows the Stromwell's son is addicted to drugs. Deals oh, with a different one. Deals with childhood guilt, uh, drama, and driving a theme of redemption no matter how far you've gone. It's unique that most media doesn't catch the Batman has a dark and brooding exterior, but he's really deep down an optimist that believes that he can help make the difference and never gives up on people. That's why he pairs up so well with Superman, because they're a lot more similar than people would initially believe. And that's why Conroy, I think, was so unstoppable in that role. Yeah. Because <clears throat> there is like a warmth to him, strangely. Yeah. There's like a comfort, there's like a texture yeah. to his voice that's not like hollow and creepy and robotic. As much yeah. as I love Affleck's, the robo voice, because I was calling for that for years. I was like, yeah. his voice should be modulated. Like, yeah. you know, like otherwise people would recognize his voice. Like, yeah. you know, like, you know. Um, I think if you had no idea who Batman was and yeah. saw uh, just a short clip of Christian Bale going, where are the drugs? You'd be like, oh, it's Christian Bale. Like you would know right away, you know? So this idea that like nobody knows it's him is silly, but. God, uh, I could talk about the animated series. I like, know. Tyler time. says, what is your favorite episode? This is a really hard one to pick. Mad Love, Beware the Great Ghost. Oh, and with Adam West. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dude, when uh, such a win. Arkham City or Arkham Knight has the poster. I think it's Arkham Knight. Oh has yeah, the poster. Yeah, yeah. so sick. Uh, and Legends of the Dark Knight are both amazing, but in the end, it comes down to Heart of Ice yeah. and Feet of Clay. Both of these take up. Both of these take up until this point obscure villains and give them legitimately interesting backstories. Feet of Clay might take the take it because of that incredible scene where he is changing between all his phases at the end. Oh, yeah, That's it's like so disturbing. Terminator 2. <laughs> so good. Um, Shout out to the music, too. I know I've talked about it, but like yes. every single character on that series, every single villain had their own um, theme. Yeah, and uh, you know, even like the ventriloquist, even just really, really like tiny villain, like Man Bat, had his own theme. Yeah, so it's yeah, it was, it was cool, especially the intro. I loved. I would love a collage or, or like a collection of all of the just those intro shots. Yeah, where they would just do these really almost like chalk. Yeah, you know, like outlines of the characters. And, uh, quick shout out because the newest Gotham made me think of it: a bullet for Bullock. Yeah, where the the angry dude is trying to take out Bullock for like yeah. a crime back in the day. It's just so I love when like you were talking about the mafia. I love excluding Batman. I love the mafia st mafia stories like Boardwalk Empire and and Godfather. Um, but I I love just noir and mafia and Batman and it like yeah. all just ties in. I just love that. It's another thing about Gotham is like I'd much rather have like a, a PD show because and I yeah. know it's the cops are in it a lot. Yeah, but I would love like NYPD Blue. But yeah. With That's Gotham. pretty much what yeah. it is. I mean, very much not so. <laughs> Gordon is the main character. I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what is your favorite episode from the animated shows? Uh, Asbo, Heart of Ice is probably the one I'd say is the best. Almost got him is the most fun. I also really like The Man Who Killed Batman. Uh, the animated yeah. series did a great job with random side characters that somehow is get that wrapped the one, up in the madness. Is that the one where Joker puts the money back? I think. I think. Or is that Batman in my basement? I can't. Not basement. That's that's such a yeah. such a great moment though. <laughs> it's when it back. Uh, yeah, it's it's because Joker's pissed right at the guy taking credit. Well, Batman doesn't show up. Like there's it's, there's a rumor that Batman's gone, and yeah, so he's yeah, like, yeah. all right, well let's test it. Yeah. And they go and they rob a bank, and Batman doesn't show up, and he's just like, put it back. <laughs> like, what are you nuts? Like he's one of the best halls we've ever had. He's like, that's not the point, you know. <laughs> so good. It's been a while since I've seen that one. I remember loving that one. All right, let's move on. Moving on, we can be here all day. Favorite villain? Oh, uh, Two Face. Two Face, of course. Yeah, of course. There's, there's so much. Uh, there's more going on there than I think any other. That's what I like about yeah. Joker, actually, because there's not a lot going on there, yeah. in my opinion. In the beginning, I think that. I think it gets there. I, yeah, but it's like. Like, to, because to me, Joker, more than any other character, that Joker's Pennywise, man. Like, Joker is a is a is a horror character. Joker's yeah. Freddy Krueger to me. Yeah. Like, Joker is is force is, of is evil a, is a is as as terrifying as as a human being without powers can get in a yeah. comic book universe. And what I always imagine with Joker is that like he puts on this front, um, and 
you know, is very theatrical, very rehearsed, you know, has a very extensive vocabulary, like Mm -hmm. has a whole, you know, like his jokes are bad, but he knows it, you know, like any, and he just loves like, uh, um, just loves, loves pissing off Batman. It's again, returning the Joker. One of my favorite moments, uh, is he does his big reveal at the end, which is horrifying, like what he's done to Batman. And, Batman's like, ah, and he like starts to get angry. I think he's tied up, and Batman like rips the ropes off, and Joker goes, Bring it. you know, and this yeah. is like this is the moment Joker lives for. Where he's just like, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I just love pissing you off so yeah. much. Yeah. I love Origins, Arkham Origins, the yeah. video game. I love when he saves Joker, and then uh, Joker's like being like put away in an ambulance, and Joker has this expression where he looks up, and Batman's go- long gone, but he has this look where he's like. You know, I never thought about Batman until today, but I love that guy. And you can see the beginning of the of the infatuation. But I imagine like when Batman actually tries to connect with him, Killing Joke, like the end of Killing Joke, where they actually do share a laugh together, and he's actually like, "Okay, okay, that's funny." Like, yeah. and I'm also so damn tired. Like, I, my defenses are down. I will laugh at that joke. Yeah. But I imagine when he gets really close to Joker. And like actually tries to connect with them and like looks into his eyes. Joker's eyes are like wigging. Like he can't, like he realizes like, oh, you're just gone. Like I can't like there might. I don't know if there's I don't know if someone's even in there, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, again to back to killing joke when Joker's like I um, uh, uh, and I know we're I've mentioned Two-Face. We're talking about Joker now. But Joker's like something bad happened to me. I don't remember what it is. Mm-hmm. But this idea that like does he not remember because he's intentionally shoving it away or is it really gone? Did he really just scar that part of his brain where that memory lies? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so Joker's fun, but again, it's the the emptiness I think of 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 him makes him such a better character for me. Whereas Two Face is just is so great and so important to the to that world. I think chronologically, it's really important to figure out if you're like writing a whole Batman arc, like wh- when Two Face happens. I think is like a pivotal turning point in everything. Yes. You know, because you can imagine. I think there's a moment. Um, yeah, it's like uh, uh, or like I can't remember. If like there's a, you see that like embracing of the villains in the animated series, yeah, where they're like, oh, we got Harvey now, yes, like because I certainly Dark Knight, you know, Joker and him have that relationship. I can't remember if that comes up. Like I remember when they uh, they take Batman to court. Yep, remember that and like Harvey's the attorney, you know, yeah. Harvey's like the lawyer. Yeah. Um, so like you do see Harvey's like kind of place in that world, um, but um, uh, yeah, it's just it's just so interesting and interesting that. I think if Harvey was in his right mind, he could probably figure out that Bruce was Batman. It's not that hard for someone from his perspective, totally. but he's so wrapped up in his own demons that it's just, it's right there and he can't do anything. Yeah. And then you have like, it's it's kind of like the one, I imagine like Batman really gets the whole being Batman thing down to like a science when he's in his 40s and mm-hmm. like he's got Batgirl and everything, you know, it's like um, uh, uh, all of these other characters like start coming into Gotham. It's like when Superman will stop by every now and the Justice yeah. League's going, you know, he's just got so much backup, but Two-Face is still that thorn in his side. It's yeah. still like the one his greatest failure. regret that he has where he's like, Damn it. Like, yeah. not only did I make this mistake, I can, I can never get back to it. I can never get him back. Even if I just want to, like, put him away and just make him safe and not hurting him, I can't even do that, you know, because... So brutal. And, and, Tragedy. And, and I like that... Uh, and I like that... Um, even if Joker or other villains don't know that Bruce knew Harvey, mm-hmm. they knew Batman knew Harvey, and so they know that like that's a pressure point. Yeah. You know, like if I get Harvey on my side, like watch, look how pissed Batman gets, you know. Like, <laughs> so it's it's just yeah, such an interesting spice to add to a story. Yeah. That you're gonna tell in that universe. Uh, Dark Knight says Joker, he'll never tire of Joker. Joker's so good. Uh, it's so it's so obvious. And really great if you don't know, look up the actor who originally inspired the character. The man, what's the black and white movie? It's like the man who wouldn't smile or the man, or the smile that wouldn't stop or something. Oh. It's about this guy who can't stop smiling. And it's actually like a, a dramatic tale because he has yeah. this affliction. But oh, it's just yeah. this, the whole movie, the guy's like smiling. And Dang. that was like one of the, the inspirations. Sarah says, as much as I don't like cold and snow, I really enjoy Mr. Freeze. His story is so incredibly tragic as you see the desperation he has trying to find a cure to bring his wife back. So intense. Um, bah, 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 bah. Which again, yeah, it, again is why I love the separation of the villains because you have the Mwahaha villains. Yeah. And Freeze is not is not like that, you know. Yeah. That's why Batman and Robin is <laughs> so unfortunate. Uh, as- Schwarzenegger's just loving the whole thing. Asbo <laughs> says probably the Joker, but Ray Al was great for really unique stories. Yeah, absolutely. Also, uh, the thing that's good about Ray is he's a worldly. 
so many yeah. uh, Rachel Gould stories. Son of the Demon, great Rachel Gould comic. Yeah. Um, but uh, you, you know, he rarely does anything in Gotham. He's Batman's got to travel around to. Yeah. And they do that on the animated series. Um, I want to talk about villains for one more second because I really believe that Batman has the greatest villains of all time. In oh, any medium. Oh, yeah. I, Without yeah. a doubt. I I would love to debate that with somebody, and like I'm not going to hold my own yeah. and be like, you're wrong, but that's the e- maybe the easiest answer I could come up Ever. with. <laughs> like, they all hit so many different points. Like you were saying about the tragedy of Two-Face and Mr. Freeze, just the craziness of Joker. Yeah. Uh, they're, all, they're all one step away from being a normal person. They yeah. just you. There's a very clear click. There's something yeah. happened. And they, you know, chose this life. Um, I love the the Arkham games. Penguin, just a straight up mob boss. Yeah. I love when Joe or I love when Penguin is just mob. Yeah, give me territory, <laughs> give me turf. I'm gonna smuggle stuff. You know, gun running. Love that Riddler, just obsessed with beating Batman. I just loved. Like, I'm yeah, smarter than I you, remember. Batman. I remember finishing Arkham City, or yeah. it might have even been Night. I think it was Night. I think it was Arkham Night, and I had done everything but Riddler, and then. Uh, I'm like finishing the game and I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'm just flying around the city. And like every now and then he'd come up and he'd be like, Batman, you still haven't solved my thing. And I was like, you know what? I I think I'm like, that actually makes sense contextually because I imagine Riddler is like the cockroach of that universe that like if if, you know, Batman were to drop a, a hypothetical theoretical nuclear bomb on Gotham and actually really tried to shut everyone down. That's actually kind of what Dark Knight. Not strikes Back. Strikes Again? What was the one after Strikes Back? That was like 10 years later? Yeah, Strikes Where Frank Miller came back Damn. and everyone hated it, but I thought yeah. it was okay. Strikes Again. Um, uh, it, the, the plot is kind of like, let's just kill all these people. Like, who cares? Like, we're all going to retire anyway. Let's just shut all of this down. Yeah. I think Riddler would still be there. They'd be like, I can't find, I can't find Riddler because I don't know where he is. Like, yeah. like Joker's got to be there. To, you know, like a lot of these villains have to be there in person to show them to show themselves off and yeah. to see if they can fight, you know, confront Batman. Obviously, Bane and Croc are much more like hands-on villains. Yeah. Whereas Riddler's just like, I'm miles away from this place. I'm yeah. never, ever, ever going to get caught. Yeah. And I, I like that, you know, that like he can stop the Riddler, but rarely, rarely actually catch the Riddler. Yes. And also, so epic. Also, I love the difference between Arkham and Blackgate. And I didn't really think about that until later because mm-hmm. I would see like Penguin and Arkham and I'd be like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Penguin's not crazy at all. He's just, a, you know, not a nice guy, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but, you know, Penguin's like Rupert Thorne. Is like, you know, yeah. he's, he's like these other just villains or he's these other crime bosses. He'd be in Blackgate. Like Catwoman would be in Blackgate. She wouldn't be in Arkham. Yeah. Um, Maybe just because like, they're such threats. Yeah. I get, yeah. And, and I, yeah, I could see like, like max, max, maximum security versus maximum more security. More from like a, techno- <laughs> yeah. you know, a technology perspective. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, and Riddler's kind of on that line where it's like, is Riddler crazy? Like, yeah. he's just a really smart guy, you know? Like, he's not as, yeah. he's not really Looney Tunes like Zeus or Joker or Two-Face or... Yeah. Um, I, even I would say uh, um, Poison Ivy is like a little mm-hmm. off, you know, uh, she's got a, a, a lost her marbles a little bit. Yeah. Oh, God, I wish you watched Gotham Jones, the final season. Oh, it's so good. Like, anyone out there, dude, you don't even need to watch any other season, just the final one. Cool, like straight and up. Hey, and I, I don't, straight up. I don't want. I, like, I, the final season's here. The rest of Gotham is here. I love being cheeky with this guy about Gotham because <laughs> there's so many things to watch and play yeah. and absorb in this yeah. world, and it's so Short painful season, that you two, can't only episodes. quiet and you can't like experience it. And it's just it's nice when you have something where it's like this is a clear thing I can you know not like reject entirely or scold yeah. people for liking, but yeah. just I, I can I can skip no this time. one. It's fine. No time. Um, but I mean you know uh, nothing but love and respect to anybody who loves the show. Like that's yeah. great. They go for as it. somebody who found you know, the animated series in the '90s and you know. Um, was very important to me. If Gotham's yeah. important to you, then yes, you know, keep on. Favorite side character. Side character. Would you consider? I mean, Alfred. <laughs> would you consider Dick Grayson a side character? He's a sidekick. Now, um, I, I, I side characters like Bullock, like Rip Montoya. Oh, Bullock. Um, Gordon. Um, yes, he knows. Uh, Gordon and Bullock, man, right here, right in my heart. <laughs> 
But I like uh, Montoya was great because uh, she was she's like the only like normal cop because like yeah. Gordon's a normal cop, but he's the he's the head of the whole division, and so yeah. um, you know, uh, and they have a very special oh, relationship. And, God, I'm dying right now. What is that episode with Montoya and Bullock? And it's the three different perspectives, like the Rashomon episode, <laughs> dude. I'm like so angry at myself. It's the one where they're all under interrogation. And they're like, what happened? You blew it. Oh, yeah. And Montoya's going through her perspective and Bullock's going through his. That's right. And then you have the rookie's perspective. Yeah. Oh, I love so that. I love that. I love whenever we get into the cops. I love yeah. their their perspective on things. Look, you were talking about grounding it. And I mm-hmm. think that's like a, a, a great way to achieve like what Nolan was trying to do is like show this the human side. Um, and I think that would be great. I would love a video game like that. I would love a game, a Batman game where you're not Batman. You're just in the world. You know, like back in the day, like MMOs are just tanking now as a genre. But like, yeah. I would talk for hours with my friends about how would you do a Batman MMO, and uh, you you could not play as any of the rogues gallery or any heroes. You could create your own heroes, but those heroes are also in the world. Yeah. So you'll be out doing stuff, and you'll see the Batwing go flying by. And so it's like this uh, to me. That's way more fascinating to not you know. It's fun to play these characters, but it would also be really interesting. Like that episode where Batman's dreaming, where he sees Batman go by. Yeah. You can imagine how weird that is for Bruce. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's what I look like. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what that is. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I love in Arkham Knight, they kind of tease you. You get to play as Gordon for like a second. Yeah. You like walk into the, the lab, you're like, I'm Gordon, I'm Gordon. What's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, and uh, <laughs> Arkham Knight really focuses on the police station a lot. How yeah. you keep bringing people back and and uh, um, even the, the you know Arkham Asylum, like meeting people that work at that asylum and getting their, yeah. um, getting their sense. Uh, the, 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 the early Arkham stories, especially the Arkham Asylum comic, that's its own weird acid trip if yeah. you want to check that out yeah uh it's very spencer mansion-esque totally. <laughs> you know so of like the, the, the family plot you mm-hmm. know going you know and them kind of being wrapped up in conspiracy and madness yes. and, yeah. favorite comic that has been adapted good call good segue there jones oh dark knight uh uh returns the, uh, the two-parter oh my with God. RoboCop. I'm so glad you said that. And that was weird the to best. me. The best. Because, uh, again, when I was a, uh, uh, an opinionated child <laughs> and I would be like, you're messing with my Batman. Yeah. Uh, I would think, like, if you're going to adapt something, just do it the way it's done. Why would you change it? And now that I'm older, totally disagree. Like, you have to change it. You have to add your own voice to it. You have to understand that it's in a different medium. And the the Batman Year One movie, I was so excited for because I'm like, this is like my favorite Batman comic. I cannot wait to see this come to life. Yeah. And they did it like verbatim. Yes. It was it was good. It's really good. But it wasn't like surprising. You know, yeah. it wasn't like there was nothing in it that I like. I didn't gasp. I was just like, yeah, that's that comic I liked. Yeah. And uh, Dark Knight Returns. Gordon with a baseball changed bat. enough, like like tweaked the story enough to because there's a lot of stuff in Dark Knight Returns that's like this was written in the 1980s. You know, like <laughs> Ronald Reagan's in it, and there's a, you know like they allude to some of that. But uh, I was I went into that a little bit skeptical and walked out like. I've only seen it once, too. I'd love to return to it, but I was very, very impressed. And it's two parters. It's just a four hour. It's like, a, it's like two and a half. You know. if you, I think oh, if you do the whole thing? They're like 75 minutes each, I think. But uh, yeah, that, that's a thing. I it. still would love a more proper ad- adaptation of both No Man's Land. Mm. Watch the final season of Gotham, please. <laughs> I'm begging you out here. I'm begging you. <laughs> no Man's Land. And Nightfall slash Quest slash End. But Nolan did variations of those with The Dark Knight Rises, Mm -hmm, definitely. mm -hmm. Uh, So instead, I would love to see The Long Halloween adapted Mm -hmm, well. mm -hmm. Really dwell on Batman as a detective working on a very long and drawn out case. Uh, There was another comment. Uh, Tyler says, I really want future films to explore the idea of Batman being the world's greatest detective. The new Batman coming out, The Batman, from uh, director of uh, uh, Apes, Rise, Dawn of the Apes, the first the first reboot Apes movie, right, is doing The Batman detective movie. They've already said, but like, isn't they don't have a Batman? They don't, they don't have, have a, Batman do they have a script? Like, <laughs> I think the script the, okay. it's in production, but it's right. moving forward. It's going down. Okay. But, Early reports are that... I'm skeptical that that movie actually exists, but it sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, any anybody that was like, oh, the detective mode is so, you know, like I ac- accidentally played half of Asylum in detective mode. And I'm like, I feel for you, man. And I understand that's yeah. weird and kind of maybe like a crutch from a gameplay perspective. Yeah. But like searching for clues in a Batman game, I was like, finally! Like, yeah. Oh. It took a while. It took a couple, you know, a decade of video of Batman video games before we got here. But yeah, that's so important. 
I like even, I like even the, guys the that jam it too. The jam your detective mode. Yeah. I love that. But song. even uh, uh, there's not a lot of that. As much as I love the two Burton movies, there's like almost none of that. He doesn't do really any detective work. He like yeah. does chemistry in the '89 one, but like when he's actually solving the Riddler's puzzles in Batman Forever, I was like, oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> like, yeah. we're actually being smart. Dark Knight has some good stuff. I think, um, too. Like, oh yeah, you know, like drilling in the wall. I remember his scenes. Like, here we go. He, well, like, that yeah, the crime scene. Well, that uh, uh, I think my favorite scene in Dark uh, in uh, just Dark Knight is um, when he. To puts on the the vision and he's got um, yeah. uh, and it's like whipping people and jumping between floors and throwing dogs and I, like his assessment of that building and like what he knows realizes he has has to do and then what he does in such a short amount of time and like, yeah. like the physicality of it is so cool. Uh, Morgan, favorite comic book that has been adapted? I would love to see the Killing Joke adapted into a live action movie. Yeah, Killing I know there Joke was, movie was not good. I know there was a cartoon uh, recently, but I heard it wasn't great. Any yeah. story that is not another big world saving dilemma, but an intimate story where Bruce Wayne's character is actually affected would be amazing. You know, it was dope. Uh, shout out to Wes Gleason. Uh, he's a friend of mine who directs like, a lot of the, the voice directs. Yeah. Uh, so there's the director of the movie, and then there's specifically the person that sits down with every voice actor and directs the performances, and he directs the VO. And he did uh, Killing Joke, and I like saw him at a party, and I was like, yeah, it wasn't good. He's like, all right. <laughs> but it's nice. I was like, close enough to him that I could be like, you know, I want you to hear it from me first. Yeah. He's like, no, of course. I've heard a lot of the great stuff. Uh, favorite comic that hasn't been adapted? Hush. Bingo. Hush. Bingo. I also love, I don't, I don't remember the name of it. Done hush. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, there's a comic where he fights Dracula. It's like a one-off. Yes. <laughs> that would be fun. Batman versus like aliens. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be fun to get. Because I really loved, uh, I actually never read the comic, but the the old um, like Sherlock Holmes, Jack the Ripper, Batman. Ugh, what is it called? Gotham by Gaslight. Gotham by Gaslight. Yeah. I, never, I never read that, but uh, saw the movie and loved it. And so I, w- I would love just uh, a, a what if, you know, uh, just one episode, two hours in a crazy Batman world would be fun. Uh, Tyler says, I, I, I read it wrong. It's favorite comic that hasn't right. been adapted. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyler says, to be fair, it would be hard as hell, but whatever happened to the Caped Crusader is amazing. Oh, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, There's always more Batman. That's what I love about it. Unlimited. There is always more Batman to read. Asbo says, The Long Halloween, also Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on Serious Earth, if we don't consider the game a true adaptation. Yeah. For sure. I wonder if my uh, review, before Arkham Asylum came out, I did like a movie, a game trailers about all the Arkham-based comics and kind of like the ar- the lore of Arkham. And that was yeah. really fun. That was fun to be like, this is my job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just reading a bunch of Batman comics. Yes. Yay. <laughs> uh, what do comics and games do that films don't, Jones? Persistence. You know, this is the idea that, and, and the Arkham Knight did a little bit of that where they're like, this villain's dead now. And you're like, yeah. oh, okay. Like, that never has the impact that I think people want. I'm always like, oh, Dude, bummer. Arkham City is my favorite moment in Batman. The end of Arkham City is. <laughs> really? Yeah. That, it's pretty cool. At the I, Monarch, I, wall, I when you go right into, into that. I was like, I can't believe I didn't know, I didn't see yeah. this coming. Damn Monarch it, Theater. That twist. I was like, oh. Dude. Culmination. Culmination. Pretty Jones. good. Pretty good. So pretty good. good. But the yeah, the thing about the comics for me um, is, to me, being Batman is the, is a marathon. You know, it's like you're not just. It's not that like. So like whenever he has a victory, so like that was moments in the end of movies where he's like, I've stalked the Joker. Dun, yeah. dun, dun, dun. You're like, yeah. dude, next day back, now. back to work, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so like uh, th- again, that's my preconceived notion of a Batman. So when Nolan shook that, I was like, Wah! you know, or when like uh, as I grew older, and I'm like, wait, that's stupid. The Joker dies in the '89 movie, you know, and the, when I craved more of this kind of a persistence because I was so just rotten spoiled uh, uh, with the animated series yeah. and how much fun it was to go back. Even fun to go back to, um, and I know the question was comics, but like to go back to uh, uh, Arkham and have him, he's like, I'm here to talk to, you know, Penguin or, or Mr. Freeze or something. But they, they're like, well, as long as we're here and we don't have to bring the voice actors in, let's have him walk by everyone's, yeah. you know, cage. And so you see Joker just ah, by himself yeah. not doing anything. And you get this sense that like, 
you know, they, they live there for a while. Like, you know, what's it like? Uh, Christmas with the Joker, you see a little bit of like the rec room at, at Arkham. You yeah, know, like I love those. I love, uh, boy, that would be a fun show. Just Arkham. <laughs> Literally just in the walls. Yeah. You know, like anytime a villain breaks out, you just hear reports of it on the TV. Yeah. A, a sitcom, a rom com <laughs> <Dude, laughs> in yes. Arkham. Yes. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, that, that's to me, that's like uh, when I think of Batman, I think of. Um, you know, wh- like what decade are we talking about? Are we talking about, you know, p- you know pre-Robin, post-Robin, yeah. pre-Jason Todd, post-Jason Todd, yeah. pre-Justice League, post-Justice League? Like those are always really like big momentous moments. Do you, And th- they just, they go by so fast. Batman do, versus Superman. Yeah. That stupid movie. Uh, it, it, like part of the disappointment of that is they, they're fighting for the dumbest reasons imaginable. Batman is just being a, a, a world-class idiot, is making just all, you know, these weird assumptions. And yeah. it's just Alfred's like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and, and when it gets over, it's like, oh, well, okay, let's never fight again. And you're like, yeah. no, you fought your whole life, man. Like, yeah. And it wasn't just because there was some weird misunderstanding of Superman's going to kill people Martha. or whatever. You just don't like Superman. He's just kind of a pompous ass you know like you just don't like you know and so i like that um uh one of my favorite moments is when he just stops and just like wedges like just flicks the batmobile and batman's like it's my car man you know like like that stuff you imagine that going on for years and years and years and you know all the justice league meetings of just the batman chair being empty and clark being like god damn you know like bruce please (laughs) show up (laughs) come to work uh Uh, do you feel like the DC universe and and Superman and 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 the the other characters are always present. Oh yeah, in Batman. And that's the other thing about do, this great about like com- when comics present, is Flash like- can pop in and say hi and then take off. So you like that? Yes. One sure. of my uh, I remember being at an airport. And I've said this also before in Easy Allies. I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but I was at an airport. And I'm like looking for stuff to buy. You know, this is before the electronics that you enjoy now in planes, where like magazines were, you, you would like do the magazine dash right yeah. before the plane would take off. And it's like, all right, Game Pro, EGM, yes. and the comic book. All right, I'm set. And uh, there was a Wonder Woman comic where she was dying. She had some like weird disease. And I was like, whoa, what's going on with Wonder Woman? So I just bought Wonder Woman. And I'm reading it, and like Green Lantern shows up, and like Hawkeye's there, or uh, Hawkman's there, and, and they're all trying to figure out what. Uh, and Green Lantern like builds a super elaborate contraption with the ring and then like um, a Martian Manhunter like shocks it or something. They like all get together and all pool their powers together and it doesn't work. And they're like, damn. And they all leave the hospital and then a nurse like checks in on Diana and then leaves and you're just in her room and like the curtain goes by and Batman walks in, draws some blood, out. And then that's it. And all it's all he did in the whole comic. And I was like, yeah. oh, I want to get the next one to like yeah. see what he did. And it's like that. I love those opportunities for people to you know pop in each other's yeah. worlds. Um, yeah, I mean, they all, like a lot of these characters have their own cities. And so it's just interesting to see like what they can learn from each other. And, um, that Superman obviously could solve all these problems, but he's just like, I just want to deal with that man. I got such a hard ass, you know, like I could solve this stuff in a day. You know, he just won't let me like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of justice league, what do you want for the future of Batman now that Batfleck is out? What do you want, Jones? Anything's on the table, dude. No dream. I don't have a lot of wants, too man. Big. I mean, another video game. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, probably more than anything. I, I mean, just in, in in movies. The next time you see Batman on your <sighs> big screen, what do you want, man? I mean, I feel like I'm staring at a table full of just eaten chocolate cake. And I'm just like, and you're like, you want some gumdrops? And it's like, gumdrops are delicious, but like, I'm, f- I'm full, you know? Like, yeah. I really feel spoiled as a Batman yeah, fan. Totally. I, re- I really, at this point, don't have a lot of... Well, they never did this, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, especially since there's things, like I said, about Batman Year One that, like, was anticipating and actually didn't live up to my expectations because of my own stupid, um, you know, hype levels, whereas other things I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would. And um, so I think probably I want to be surprised more than anything. I would love a a really weird – I would love a focus on um, other characters. I love that, like, Batwoman is finally on – was she an Arrow that she came on or The Flash? Yeah. Uh, I love that uh, the, the Titans are now getting their, you know, like Robin's the lead yeah. now. So like, it's it's fun to see these other characters um, get the spotlight on them. Yeah. Cause like, man, we just have, so, we've had so many actors, so, many. so much work done. Uh, like when after Nolan, I was like, oh, okay, we're gonna take some time off and, we're, and there's no right back into it. Yeah. Um, so 
Yeah, I'm sorry that I, I'm obviously hope, you know very passionate about Batman, and like I don't have a there is one I don't thing. have an answer. You do have an answer. Uh, I mean, an, a true open you, world video game. Yeah, put it that way. Okay. An open world Batman game that's day and not, night cycle. Day and night cycle. Uh, I can at will change between Bruce Wayne and Batman. Pick whatever vehicle I want. Mm-hmm. All the other, you know, pick if you know other characters that I want to join me. Has a has a new game plus or a, or a mode at the end after I get the credits and I finish the campaign where random villains will pop up in random places and I can go and stop them and oh, Rocksteady um, show us because they were on. yeah it was kind of like pseudo open world but there was always a catch you know. Yeah. It was like, oh, the catch is there's a militarized zone, so you got to use the Batmobile. Oh, the catch yeah. is it's Escape from New York. Oh, the catch is you're stuck in Arkham. Oh, the catch is it's Christmas and everyone's asleep. Like, yeah. you know, so I would just love it. Like, no catch. Like, give me, give me Marvel Spider Man 2018, but with Batman. Yes, I would. I want that more than any comic or TV show. Or I know I what movie of. you want though. Okay, because I really want it. Too. Okay, Batman Beyond. I don't want it. I don't want what? it nearly as much as you. Oh, what? I'd watch it. I wouldn't be sad. I think it's if I saw perfect. the trailer, I wouldn't be like. Meh. I think I'm, it's well, there. Day one. I think it just fits so well narratively, thematically with the current DC universe films. I, I guess I feel about it the way I feel about Avatar because like Netflix is making the live action thing. Yeah, and I love that story. But the the medium that they originally told it Avatar in, James Cameron or Avatar cartoon? Avatar cartoon. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh. And just the medium, the, the 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 cast that they picked, the tone, the music, just everything just perfectly fit the story that they were trying to tell. And so like a live action Terry McGinnis, like, I don't know, it's kind of like the live action Kim Possible movie. You're like, okay, <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna enjoy this, but it's not gonna be better than the source material. It's not gonna like go places that the show couldn't, you know, like, you know, uh, animated series really paved the road for you know, Justice League Unlimited and beyond, you know, to do all sorts of crazy, crazy booster gold and, you know, like just be like, hey, we got a blank check. We can just bring all of this crazy yeah. stuff into it. So I don't know what a live action Batman Beyond would do that I. Because the DCE is so out of control. Beyond maybe just like a raw emotion when you actually have actors like yeah. playing through all that stuff. It's, it's just such an easy way to pass the torch. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, those movies are so bombastic and out of control. Everyone's flying, moving around. Like right. Batman Beyond, you just give them like a. Black Panther style suit and let him unleash. Especially if you like brought Keaton back, you know, if he, he did something like that, because uh, yeah, there's rumors abound, you know, of like the, he's interested, they want that to happen. Oh, like, um, but um, yeah, you're messing with like Flashpoint, dude, and timelines yeah. convert. Oh my god, dude! Even just like Conroy, like on camera, Conroy is like an old Batman, like <gasps> way down. Would you kindly uh, says give us an aging analog Batman? Gray but strong fists. Daniel Day Lewis, Russell Crowe, Brian Cranston, and John Malkovich as Joker. Imagining the following trailer: an old broken Bruce Wayne in the rain at the cemetery with roses for his parents, and Alfred to Johnny Cash's an iron cover of Hurt. He then receives future photos of Robin and worse in the in the post. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, old old Batman. I'm because they kind of did that, for that sure. with Ben Affleck. But didn't, you know, because... Old Batman? Well, it's like he's been Batman in that universe for like 20 years or right. something. So it is like a more aging Batman. I know yeah. he wasn't like old, like old, old, but it was still like, dude, Batman's been doing this forever. And yeah. so they kind of danced around it. But yeah. Sorry, just sorting through, sorting through. Take your time. I am in no rush. Oh, now I'm thinking about that Batman game. I know. Rocksteady, where are you? I st- please be at E3. If they're not at E3, I will be crushed. It'll be strange if they're not like at E3. Four if they're not at E3, now. then they're waiting for next gen. They're yeah. waiting to, to jump on that. They're waiting for those consoles to be known, and then we come yeah. out in that. We're coming out on these guys. Which, ooh, goosebumps. Yeah, goosebumps <laughs> for sure. I mean, dude, this could be Power Rangers, man. Who knows? Who knows? I know. know. It it might not even be Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully then uh, the Origins team will be working on a Batman or something. Like WB Montreal. Again, man, chocolate cake. Like, I'm so... We're blessed. I know. Blessed. I know. Four, like, 10 out of 10 Batman games. Who should the new Batman be? Um, I think... I think it's time to get back to hot take. Hot take. Here I we go. I don't hate Clooney's Bruce Wayne. 
Okay. Uh, I remember when yeah. Batman and Robin came out, I was like, hey, he's a pretty good Bruce Wayne because the whole point of Bruce Wayne to me is it's like the another great animated series moment, but it's uh, Hugo Strange finds out. I don't even know if it was Hugo Strange or somebody else because I know Hugo Strange finds his identity, but somebody finds out that Bruce Wayne is Batman and like, like auctions it to the highest bidder and all the villains are interested like oh we want to know we want to know and then he finally tells him like it's Bruce Wayne and there's a shot of like all the villains looking at each other and then they all laugh <laughs> and they're like shut up get out Bruce Wayne and like that's Clooney you yeah. know like if Clooney actually was Bruce Wayne you wouldn't think for a second like what no, that guy like that guy's not <laughs> that guy there's no spine like that guy's not like it's running around so saving good. people um, and so I, I don't hate John Hamm really tall guy yeah um Definitely, if you you know if you put that guy in a gym for two months straight, you know, like I could definitely see him getting jacked, Chris Hemsworth style. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he just kind of has this stoicness um, that uh, I just think fits. But I think it's getting more back into, and obviously it's like, it's impossible to remove Mad Men from your mind when you think about him. But like, yeah. I, I would like to get back to like that old, like an old kind of Hugh Hefner kind of polished mint. Um, uh, you know, version of, of Bruce Wayne. So you can just kind of, because that's also too, you think about how exhausting that is. He's out all night and then he's only got maybe like four hours a day if he's going to get sleep to like, yeah. to like, you know, moonlight during the day as Bruce Wayne to just make appearances mm -hmm. so people don't ask questions. And it's just after getting his ass kicked, he's got to like show up in just like the best suits money can buy and be like, hey, I got a full night's rest. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about this merger. Let's do this. And yeah. then like go back to this completely other persona. Yeah. So it'd be interesting Again, those are some of my favorite bail moments where you had that, I own this restaurant now. Like, love that. I would, I, I'd love a, yeah. a Batman movie to explore that more, kind of how he can use his leverage as Bruce Wayne um, and, and the challenges he faces. Not with, like, these big corporate, uh, what's his butt, who plays the, the guy. Didn't you get the memo? No, uh, Morgan Rugger Freeman. Howard. The, Rugger Hauer. Yeah, 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 man, yeah. Rugger yeah. Hauer. Yeah. Um, but, like, that, you know, not like, oh, the company's gone. Now it's back. Now it's gone. But just kind of more intercompany um that was another, hey, you steal this one because I'll never have the time to write it. But uh, TV show idea. Uh, and I thought about this when I saw Dark Knight when yeah. the guy, he's like, so you're, you're going to, you know, uh, um, uh, what does Morgan Freeman say that's so genius? He's like, oh, you're going to blackmail this person? Yeah. But like, what if that was a show where you had two guys? I think I told you this. You have two guys within Wayne Enterprises that find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And are like, what do we do? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's like suits, you know, like that show. But like in Gotham, like with guys that are like, Oh no, I kind of don't want to know this, but now that I know this, it's like seeing the Matrix. Like now all of this, yeah. oh, of course it he, oh sense. my God, now I know who Robin is. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and is what, what did they do and how did they me? get wrapped up? Yeah. yeah. Again, exploring characters that aren't the characters we know so well. Cathal says, Keanu Reeves. As Batman? Keanu. Can you see it? I can't. No? No. Okay. Just watch the, just rewatch the Matrix trilogy though within days, like yeah. this past week. And he's great, but not a lot of people uh, had ideas. I mean, yeah, you, for... you know, I wouldn't be angry, but Tyler says John Hamm, because that's the other thing too that the animated series done well did well that a lot of people don't is like Bruce's six two shoulders are eight feet apart. You know, <laughs> like he's just a large human being. Yeah, but that's part of how you know. Not diminutive, but like how, you know, tricky it is for him to play the Bruce Wayne side of it because he's just this massive human. Yeah. And so like he intentionally will find ways to kind of like make him seem, you know, clumsy and yeah. Um, uh, I yeah. love when he's just so aloof as Bruce Wayne. God, I love it. But there, yeah. <laughs> but this been tough. Like even Bale's like not that big of a guy. He got muscular, yeah. but he's just not. It'd be fun to see like linebacker Bruce. Yeah. Um, Stephen Beaumont says a Zac Efron led Nightwing movie. Oh, yeah. I, I, do, I love Nightwing. Yeah. Especially in what's his town? Uh, Some like city, right? He leaves and goes somewhere else. I can't remember the name of it. But that'd be fun. Jones, um, I'm, I'm, in the, uh, I'm in the camp of like, here, here's where I pull a Jones where it's like, it needs to be this way. <laughs> I like solo Batman. So much more than Robin, Batgirl, okay. Nightwing. Like, just give me Batman by himself, you know, because then we get the internal monologues. We get, you know, sure. him doing the detective work. Like, I love Robin's Reckoning. And I, and I love, you know, stories with, with Barbara Gordon and, and Nightwing and Robin. Like, I like them a lot. I would say I love them. <laughs> but when it's solo Batman, sure. it's just up here sure. for me. Like, way more. Are you the same or does it not matter to you? Uh, just, it's a different thing. 
Yeah. This is a different part of his life. Like when you deal with, when you like introduce Jason Todd's death, it's like, yeah. oh, that's so juicy. Yeah. It's, in terms of, we were talking with, you know, uh, um, with Two-Face, just this this raw, you know, yeah. um, truth staring him in the face all the time that he just cannot escape. And this idea that like, that was my, that was my son. You know, like yeah. I was in charge of that kid. You know, like what did I do? Like where did I make the mistake? Did I make the mistake by not protecting him as Batman? Did I make the mistake by bringing him into this period? You know, and so this idea of Tim being like, I want to be brought. He's like, yeah. just oh, God, <laughs> leave me alone. You know, like yeah. he's just so you know. And even when he gets to Strikes Back, when you have, I think Carrie, I think is the name of the Robin and Strikes Back, um, and him just completely rejecting her and her yeah. literally just just to like forcibly follow him everywhere, and yeah. he's finally just like, all right, I can't stop you. Uh. Um, but. Um, yeah, it's just a whole nother, it's just, he just graduates to a, a different role. Yeah. And that's why, I, yeah, that's why I don't like the idea. I, I like to see Batman age. I like to, you know, have his hair get gray and, and have him slow down a little bit. So Definitely. you can see the, 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 the struggle. The him, Bat family. Oh, depending on tech a little bit more. Yeah. When he gets into the later, when he's like, okay, we're in space now. All right, well, I need a metal suit, you know, yeah. like, and him, like, it's kind of charming for me when you see the Justice League and they're all like, here we go. And he's like, wait, I'm, you know. <laughs> like, like Court of Owls, I'm a human, I'm a human being. <laughs> he fights like one Talon Court of Owls and like <laughs> dies and then they all like pretty much they all come in yeah. to Wayne Manor and he like has the giant suit where he's like all right let's go there's a great Justice League episode I wish I knew what it was where he flies the Batwing in to stop something and the Batwing crashes and he gets like, wasted and everyone's fine at the end because they're all like gods and so like Wonder Woman and Superman are in the hospital like and Batman's like oh, like in a cast and they're like hey we almost you know like, and, and, and Superman like jokes with Batman and Batman like pauses and looks at Superman and he's like you don't get to joke about this it's basically just like I'm in pain right now dick yeah. um, and so funny yeah so I, I love uh, I love when Batman shows his age I love when you have to like I think if you're going to tell any Batman story you have to ask like oh it's you know it's just in Gotham it's like there's a big difference in you know you know what stage of his life you're at and and what that means to me that like that speaks volumes when I see like well how old are these other characters oh your Joker is older than Bruce or vice versa or you know um yeah and that was the other thing with the Nolan verse which is ages were strange mm -hmm. but um yeah I would love dude speaking of Court of Owls that'd be a, such a good movie like Court of Owls post villains so like Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises happened years later. Like, yo, Court of Owls, like, taken over. Oh, mm -hmm. so good. All right. Dude, who said that? I just saw a buzzword. <laughs> I saw Logan, who said that. Jeffrey, I'm cheating, but just a second quickly. Logan-styled live-action Batman Beyond movie with Keaton. Yeah, there you go. <sighs> Be really good. It's fun to see. There's some Batman joke in in uh, Homecoming. There's some joke. I can't remember. There's something that Keaton says that's like, oh, why don't, why don't. it's really subtle. I can't, yeah. you know, it's so subtle. I forgot it. Yeah, and I just watched it like a week ago. But like he just, I mean, him just being the villain and being very tech based. You know, like yeah. having the suit that he wears. Like, last question: Who so far has portrayed the definitive? I don't know, man. Kevin it's Conroy? It's tough. Y yeah, well, yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, as far as just being well-rounded, because every other Batman, um, I I just take a, something, like, they just, they nailed some aspect of it. Like, mm -hmm. Keaton nailed the broodiness. Like, he just, he nailed the sorrow. You know, like, you could really feel, by the time he got to Clooney, and he's like, my parents are like, yeah, it's, it's, there's nothing left, Clooney. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, like, I don't care. Um, but, like, the, you know, they really nailed his... Um, uh, and, you know, he had a little bit of personality, but I, like, I think Kilmer kind of took that a little f uh, further. I love when he, uh, uh, he hears um, uh, Nicole Kidman, like, you know, with the punching bag and he like kicks the door down and she's like, what? I'm training. And he's like, oh, sorry. And he's like trying to put the door back and he can't, you know, and it's just like, it, again, it's just the awkwardness of, of Bruce where he's like, I don't even know how to. You know, I, like like when I'm in the bat suit, I'm fine. I put on this suit, and I don't, I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah. Uh, and then Clooney, like I said, with the you know the cheesiness inherent in Bruce, but then you got Bale, who bring, finally brings this like so awesome physicality to the role, uh, and uh, you see physically how that's affecting him. And then I think Affleck did a really good job of. I think he kind of brought a like a punchiness, almost like a, a Jason Bourne ness to it where like yeah. this guy looks like he's been in a fight like yeah. this guy looks like he's he's, been, he's been around the block he's just you know if he wasn't this you know he's beat, beat no up patience. when he started yeah like whatsoever yeah unapologetic 
don't care. I don't joke anymore. Yeah. Which, again, it's the stages. Like, I, yeah. I imagine Bruce being very, um, you know, possibly willing to kind of go toe-to-toe personality-wise with, like, Joker and some of the yeah. other silly characters. But then, like, by the time he's 40, it's like, I don't laugh anymore. Like, Man, I, there's so much potential there with Ben Affleck and like when, when In Superman, the animated series, like, when Wonder uh, Woman, like, leaves the dimension... And like right before they leave, turns to Batman and she's like, wait a minute, when we leave this dimension, I think that she's going forward in time. And mm-hmm. she's like, when we time travel, we're going to erase you. And Batman's like, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, okay, that's Ben Affleck. Like that, that's that Batman. That's yeah. just like, don't care. I just, you know, it's like, like a, like a, like a 60 year old general of like, you know, someone yeah. who's just seen so many wars that they're like, I, you know, just want to get the job done. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's tough. It's so yeah, it'd probably be Conroy, but to not just, you know get super glossy about Conroy, was not a big fan. Another stupid, controversial Batman opinion that I've stated before. I was not in love with him doing the Arkham series. Really? Because it was like, it was like Conroy, like, <gasps> like Hamill, like, <gasps> it's like, who's Gordon? It's like some guy, like, oh, oh. Yeah, it's hurts. like, oh, well then who's Mr. Freeze? And who, and it's like, oh, just a whole new cast. Mm-hmm. And like, well, do it or don't do it. You know, it was, it was weird. To have that Some Batman talk to all these random, yeah. <laughs> like, they brand new Harley voice for actors. Just Asylum, and yeah. then they changed Harley. So it was, I, I would have loved, uh, case in point, Spider-Man. You know, it's like, there's some really talented actors that have played Spider-Man, but, mm-hmm. like, really fun to have Yuri come in and, and have a whole new cast of, of people that we now, you know, are hopefully getting, like, a lot of great attention because of their performances in that game. And you were really glued to, like, this world, yeah. where it was this weird... Like I, you know, I love them, and you know, any time like he could read the phone book, man, and I would just sit like the whole time. Yeah. But um, yeah, there was a part of me that was like, I think this it could have been more special, I guess, maybe not better, but like yeah. more unique. Dark Knight's uh, favorite is Bale. He gets closest to nailing both Bruce and Batman, and is a trilogy that actually focuses more on Bruce the person more than most. I love the car crash in Dark Knight. Yeah. Where he's like, oh. oh, you tried to save him. He's like, what? Who did I save? Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> so great. His gravel voice got a bit too much at times, but still great overall. Great diplomatic answer there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Hockey bad. <laughs> like, we joke, <laughs> but I love it. It's like, who, you know, what? Like, you were saying the voice modulation. It's like, what would uh, Batman do? Like, when I go, gotta disguise it. When I go <laughs> back now, it's it's silly. But when I first saw Batman Begins and he yanks Flass up and is like, yeah. swear to me. I was, that was such a win for me. That yeah. was the touchdown extra point. Like, yes. Because I'd, I'd never seen a, a, a live action portrayal of this moment. Yeah. You know, this was something like the anime the series also really stepped in where he's like, he has all sorts of various fun ways to freak people the hell out and yeah. scare people into, into giving him answers. Um, and uh, finally, like, oh, yeah. Someone's uh, afraid of him. Like, going back for a second, Morgan Mahala, what do you want for the future of Batman? Because mm-hmm. that's kind of where I want to end, you know? The future is coming. Like, DCEU now, they just said that they're going to focus more on individual stories because Wonder Woman and Aquaman did so well. They're focusing on just individual. They're going to stop trying to connect it as much. Right. Which I think is a good move that they should have done to begin with. They were just like, huh, Marvel's Cinematic Universe? All right, let's do it immediately. So the whole, Bad like, move. Lois Lane is the key. We're never going yeah. to yeah. get the payoff. They're taking a step back. <laughs> Uh, I have a hot opinion on this one. It should go into hibernation for a while. Ten years. The DCU is making it worse. A lot of solid stories have been tapped, and the superhero market is getting crowded. When it does come back, I would hope that Batman is there, but there is more focus on the people around him and their struggles. I believe that having Batman there, but shining the light on some, Nightwing, Robin, Barbara, struggles as they develop their skills would be far more compelling to watch because at the end of the day, we know Batman will be just... Yeah, I'm again like I I love the game more than anything, but like I just I I, I let it cook, you know. Like yeah. I, I, Titans is apparently great. I've heard from a lot of people. It yeah, actually like it. people were super down on it service. when it was just the marketing, but like people are, are digging it now. And so it's like yeah, let that run its course. Yeah. Gotham's winding down, so like yeah. that's the end of an era. Um, totally fine with getting a Flash movie. Like mm-hmm. bring a Marsh Manhunter movie, man. Make yeah. you know like uh, 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 you know, try that Green Lantern movie again. Like yeah, we, we totally fine with Batman going away because then then we can come back and approach it from a fresh perspective. Yeah. But like a Flash movie sounds as hard to do as a Superman video game. It just sounds hard to sure, do. Sure. Sure, sure. Like what yeah. do you even do? He runs around every fight is it's just a crazy like, character so just, to write. So I did yeah, I did uh, uh, I I 
didn't finish the screenplay, but I wrote an outline and I wrote various scenes of a Justice League film. So like I got my own Justice League movie. Yeah. And like Flash is a very Flash and Lex Luthor were the two hardest characters to write because you have Lex where it's like, what mistakes would Lex ever make? You yeah. know, like Lex is a very smart guy. So like where would they beat him? Where would they get in front of him? And like what problem would the Justice League ever have to face that Flash wouldn't be like done next? You know, like so how do you challenge Flash? Like yeah. how do you make something that, that would split the league up and they Without- would have to focus on other things? Without nerfing them, you know? Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, you take away his speed. Or like, Superman, oh, we got kryptonite. Even Infinity War, which I Ah. love so dearly, when Thor (laughs) shows up at the end and fights Thanos. Just like, where you been, Thor? Like, they kind of established that he's out taking out the UFOs. He had to get his hammer. He's he's the one single-handedly, like, clearing out the rest of the army. But you don't really see it. And so it's just like, yeah, it's always frustrating superhero movies when it's just like, oh, and now I'm here. It's like, where where you been? Come on. But like, one moment that, um, the other thing, too, why I'm not like they need to tell this comic book or like we need to get this perfect reinvention of the character is the animated DC is killing it. Really, really, really good. Like one of my favorite moments and I'm not just plugging it because my wife's in it, but the death of (laughs) Superman, um, there's a really great scene where uh, the Justice League meets to try to figure out what they're going to do. And this is after the Justice League kind of broke up or was it? No, this was an injustice. Okay. After he rescues, no, totally wrong. So, but still plug uh, yeah. Death of Superman. Um, I believe it's an injustice where they meet and uh, they're uh, they have a long. Uh, yeah, it's after they like rescue Superman and they're kind of hashing out what they're gonna do and they're like, okay, that's the plan. Okay, break everybody. And then Superman's walking away and they're in like some warehouse somewhere and Superman's like, you kept it. And Bruce is like, what? And they're just like, not not friends anymore at all. Not on speaking terms. And Bruce is like, what do you, what do you mean I, I kept? And Superman like pulls the the uh, cover oh, off. So epic. And it's the Justice League table. Yeah, dude. And Bruce is like, oh, yeah. Whatever. And walks away. And <laughs> yeah. you're like, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> so there's, there is still really, really good opportunities. <sighs> like, I, again, I just feel so nourished. Yeah. As a Batman fan, I, I cannot complain. Yeah. Um, I complained a lot when I was a kid. But, like, at this point, like, I'm, I'm so grateful An embarrassment for, of riches. Yeah. Especially yeah. because also um, my heyday of Batman comics was the 90s. Like, that's yeah. when I read. the. That's when I was really re- constantly reading comics. was like, I've missed out on so much good mm-hmm. stuff um, that um, I'd love to go back. Long Halloween. Go, go now. Especially since the Pinnacle. New 52 and that whole reboot. I've like, not absorbed in any Phenomenal. of that. Phenomenal. The um, first New 52 reboot, because then they that ended and right. now they did it again. Mm-hmm. The rid- with like Begins with Court of Owls. <laughs> so good. And another good thing, I, I know I was, so I, I was trashing on Celine Murphy, but uh, uh, Scarecrow being involved in Batman's origin? That worked, that worked out really well. Yeah. Like, I remember that made a lot of sense considering the way they do these movies, the same thing with the X-Men franchise where they have the big list of villains. And yeah. so like whatever movie they're making, they're like, who's next? Uh, Ra- Ra's al Ghul and the Scarecrow. Okay, so how do we work <laughs> them into this movie? Like they weren't in that movie because it made sense. Like yeah. they were in that movie because they were the next in line. Totally. And the fact that he made, really made that work, like Ra- you know, uh, Ra's al Ghul and... Um, Need a good croc Scarecrow and fear and the training aspect really of count. it. Yeah. Give me, give me some of the... Croc, yeah, we're, we're getting another Suicide Squad movie, and yeah, I, Will I'm Smith not in it. You hear that? Deadshot, Will Smith out. Uh, yeah, I, was, I thought that was a rumor. Cheetah was gonna replace him or something. Like, I think he, I think he's out. I don't know. Who knows? Wait, so it might not be good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do they just? We man, I, I can't believe we got through this entire conversation, especially because this is a movie podcast, and just Batman versus Superman just yeah. danced its way through this podcast Dances and what? right out the door. We didn't spend. I don't like to talk about it. Gosh, because <laughs> you know the hashtagist is watching this. You know it. You know Does he's he watching. It? He loves it. He will. Di- that is the hill he's going to die yeah. on in this universe. I think Greg Miller loves it too. Is to defend. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm. Just- I don't want to hate it. You I'm, know what I mean? Like, I'm, I don't... I'm indifferent on it. It's fine. Batman right. vs. Superman to me is fine. I went back rewatching them before um, Aquaman or Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. I went back and got through Batman vs. Superman. And I was like, ah, it's fine. It's whatever. Justice League, though. Jones mm-hmm. had to turn it off. <laughs> it was late night. I was watching Justice League. I was like, dude, when I'm Michael not, yeah. Huber because, turned something off. Yes, it's unprecedented. Because it, it, when I came out of the theater for Justice League, I saw it with Brad, and we were like, dude, that was awesome. It was great. I liked it more than Batman vs. Superman. Like, initially in the theater, you know, I came out of Justice League, like, positive. And Flash like, helps a lot. Yeah, I was, like, so into it. <laughs> yeah, and, and Wonder Woman, of course, too. Watched it at home. <laughs> halfway through, I was like, 
I had I, checked my phone like three times during it. I was like, okay, I'm out. I like Steppenwolf. When I first heard Steppenwolf, I was like, Steppenwolf? Yeah. For like a Justice League movie? Like yeah. not Brainiac, not Lex? Like yeah. interesting? Yeah. Um, and I think that actually made more sense than I was expecting it to, especially with the tie-in yeah. with um, the Atlanteans and uh, totally. Um, totally. the Amazons. Like, Love that like, scene. Oh, okay. There's some good That's stuff. That's fun. Yeah, Justice League has some really good action, mm. some good moments. But just overall, I was, I was bored. So I was like, yeah. It wasn't like malicious. It wasn't like turning you off. It was like, but it's I'm the same, just gonna go do something. It's the same thing for me else. as the Nolan verse. It's the same thing as the two Schumachers. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a lot here. Like, I will if you want to have a party at my place where we gather together and make fun of that. We can do it, but there will be a couple moments where I'll be like, everyone yeah. stop laughing because yep. this part is legitimately sick. Like, yeah. uh, you know, Affle again, just Affleck's characterization. Jeremy Irons is Alfred. Yeah, um, dude. Uh, when um, Batman saves uh, all Clark's the tech, mom, dude. Yeah, all the tech. That scene. That so, so sick. Somebody posted on Twitter and they said this is the best live action Batman action sequence. And I was like, I'm, "You're not wrong. Like, it's it's certainly up there. It's up that there. fight where he gra like, like it's up there. He like uh, bat grapples a box and just slams yeah. it into a guy's face. There's a lot of really cool moments in that. It's that in uh, Bane. A love, lot of just kind of love like that first abrupt Bane brutality fight. to Batman, which I like. Just this like, shut up. You know, like yeah. I just love that yeah. that power. But um, yeah, Bane, dude. take it or leave yes. it. There's a lot. What? Bane, Dark Knight Rises, such a good fight. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Good. Again, there's just some really good. I was born in the dark. Yeah, yeah there's some really good. <laughs> stuff, I love man. it. Some good stuff. I'm here for it all. I want to end it right there. Dark Knight Rises, hot takes, quickly go. Um. Oh yeah, just super backwards. Again, it, it's it's. Uh, I, I'll say one thing about Rises that they botched entirely, and oh, it's no. a and it's a real simple fix. And it broke my heart because I think one of the things for all of the issues that that trilogy has, one of the through lines is like Gary Oldman is transcendent, like he's the best Gordon ever. Uh, and Ben McKenzie. Um, I know, I know. And the uh, Alfred Zimbalist was Alfred. I can't remember. Can't, uh, or not Alfred Zimbalist. Uh, um, can't remember his first name. Can't remember the guy who plays him on uh, the animated series. But um, uh, their relationship was so good, and the fact that like they they added that like he was there, which I in my own personal Batman, I, I don't think Gordon was there. I like Gordon come like literally moving to Gotham. Mm -hmm. I think that's cool because then he's a fish out of water, yeah. and nobody knows him. You know, it's like the idea of he's like, oh, I've been here forever. I, I'm not a fan. But uh, him like taking Bruce Wayne as a kid, you know, like young Gordon, yeah. and then at the end when he like finally reveals himself. And like she like takes the mask off before the yeah. Batwing flies away. I was yeah. like, oh, what a fun move mo moment! And then he, I don't even remember what stupid line he says where he's like, "One time you took care of a boy," and I'm like, Shh, "Quiet, quiet! Don't say yeah, anything. Just take it off." Yeah. Imagine how beautiful that moment would have been, man, yeah. if he literally just took the mask off and looked at him, and like it was literally because those are some good actors. Yeah. It's yeah. literally just on Oldman's face and just on Bale's face. This realization of like, oh my god, because there's a whole process of of him going through where it, like he's like. Oh wow, you're Bruce Wayne. Oh, of course you are because you have that money. Oh wait, that means you did all those things before. Oh my God, you're that kid. Yeah. Oh my God. And then like right when he finally it dawns on him, Shit's he's gone. He flies way. away, and then he's just like, for all I know, he's dead. That's a, I said. So I said goodbye to him. You know, like, yeah. but he's like stupid dialogue. Yeah. Ugh. So it's got some but again, problems, but I love it. I same thing with Batman, right? Superman, man. Like, there's there, it's got moments. Henry Cavill is like my favorite Superman. Sorry, Christopher so Reeve. Like, I love him. Yeah. I think he really, really fits in well with that role. He just got bad scripts. Just got bad movies to be yeah. in. But uh, I'm ready for more. You got a game? I'll play it. You got a show? I'll watch it. You got a movie? I'm buying tickets today. That buying those tickets. Joker movies, man. Joker. Yes. Yeah. How I don't hyped. care. I don't care. I'm not, dude, my ten out of ten. The, the slate is clean. Yeah. That thing can go anywhere it wants. Okay. And I will be there for okay. a one hour photo. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, oh like my God. whatever. You know what I mean? One hour. At photo. this point, with all of the Disturbing. jokers we've gotten, especially after Ledger, like I think that's kind of the nice thing that Ledger did was he was so committed. I mean, the, the role took his life. You know, uh, depending on who you ask, and like. It's so I, I think he kind of you know set up that character, especially after Hamill's just like. That's how he sounds. Yeah. Like, like no one. Everyone's gonna either just pretend to be that or try to do some drastically different characterization. And so when you have movies like this, like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah. When people are like, we don't need two Joker movies. Like, we need twenty Joker yeah, 20. movies. <laughs> like, how Keep can I coming. say no as a fan? How can I? This will. This this character will never be oversaturated. That will never be too much for me. Yeah. I'm ready for Seven, more. There will be another reaction shots <laughs> episode about <laughs> Batman. Mark my words. Oh, we'll do a spoiler <laughs> mode on Joker for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, like, mm. like, uh, like it said, 76 years or something. A, a eternal character, you know, stands yeah. the test of time. 
Timely. Shout out to Bob Finger and Kane. Definitely. Shout out.